there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the Farm Vlog today. This is another of our video on fencing, the fencing series here on the farm. There's gonna be many, many more videos to come. And today we are stretching a run of wire that's what, about 500 feet or about so? 500 feet, yep. Okay, so we're stretching tornado wire. This is what type of wire, the, what size? 134812, uh, it's okay. a fixed knot. Fix knot 13, yep. 48, 12. 13 strands going this way. That's correct. Yep. 48 is, is height, how high? In inches. Yep. And 12 means? The stay spacing. Stay spacing. So the down shot of the wire. So the stay spacing. So what we're going to do here today is we're going to stretch the wire to our metal post here. We're using tornado wire. If you guys follow the channel, you know that's what we're using for our farm. We've been to the factory. If you haven't seen that video, there'll be a link at the end of the video. That we do today and you can click on that and you can see exactly how this wire is made this is a fixed knot wire here high tensile woven wire fence so we're going to show you guys a good way to stretch your fence today we'll talk about the bracing we'll talk about all this this applies to a wood fence metal fence post any kind of fence post that you got it's a great way to stretch your wire so come along on the farm vlog today as we learn from luke all right. Hey, this ain't the Red Beaver. He kind of looks like Red Beaver. Guys, I want to introduce you to Who's Red Beaver. Red Beaver is my hunting partner on the channel. He kind of appears out of nowhere and then goes away, and then we'll go on a fishing trip, and okay. Red Beaver shows up. So everybody that watches the channel knows who the Red Beaver is. You kind of got that. You kind of got a little bit of red in there. So it is a little red in it. Guys, this is Pete with GCI Turf Services. He is out of. Greensboro, North Carolina area, I guess. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, Reedsville, you only live, what, 18 minutes away from me. Yep. He has a YouTube channel, I had no idea. So he was following the farm vlog. He found out that we were close by. I reached out and said, hey, any YouTuber that wants to come and join us and also any volunteer that wants to come. We got volunteers coming up today. So I reached out to him. He's come out here to help us. This is Pete with GCI Turf Services. I'm gonna let him tell you about his channel before we start stretching this wire. Hey, it's Pete <laughs> with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day. And all this is really cool. I've got some really big, nice equipment. You know, I'm an equipment guru. So I'm gonna watch them, check them out, see how they put this fence stuff in. It's really neat uh, to see all this work. Thank you, Josh, for yeah. calling me. Thanks for coming uh, up, man. We do lawn care. I own a actual boots on the ground lawn care company uh, here in Greensboro. And then we also have what's called GCI Turf Academy, where I teach the DIY crowd <laughs> how to have a yard using professional products. You know, a lot of times I go to big box stores and buy crap. Right, right. And yeah. it just, it tore me up. That's I don't what... like wasting money on stuff. So. I've made it possible now that these uh, homeowners can get, you know, high quality co good stuff. commercial stuff. Yeah. And man, the and make result, the lawns explode. Exactly. Yeah. Results speak for themselves. That's kind of what we learned. You know, we started out going to box stores to get our grass seed for the farm, box stores to get fertilizers for the farm. Now, in order to establish grass here, we want to be an all organic farm, but in order to establish grass, we got to get some fertilizer, we got to feed that grass because there's just no topsoil in this area. Mm -hmm. There's nothing left from the tobacco farms and the hundreds and hundreds of years of farming. So that's why we moved out west because the land was turned into trash here. So people started making their way out west where the topsoil was 18 feet deep. Yep. Now the topsoil out there is an 18 feet deep. So right. guys, check out GCI Turf's channel. He's gonna be helping us out today. I just wanna introduce him to you before we start stretching that wire. What do you think about the wire? I think it's pretty tough, man. It's some stout stuff. We got up there, he's a big guy. What do you, what, are you, what about 260? Uh, 250. 250? Yeah. He said 250. I'm 270. Me and him both just kind of leaned up against this wire, man. It's like a trampoline, ain't it? Oh, yeah. You can't tear it down. Yeah, ain't no cow yeah. going to tear it down. We're going to run the gator into it later on. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on a farm, as a matter of fact. And it was funny because you just nick it with a piece of equipment yeah. or something. The whole fence comes down. Yeah. You can't. That's tough. Technology is changing, isn't it? That's pretty dang tough right yep. there. Yeah. Remember when the farmer used to think a cell phone was for a rich person? Now we can't do without them. Exactly. Yep. That's right. We're going to have some fun, guys. We've got a net board right here, and we'll stretch this net board right across the wire. We'll attach it to the fence, and then we're hooking up to a winch cable, which is right over here. And you can see Pete running his camera. We're right over here on the uh, Evo 1. This Evo is an Evo yep. 1, Protec Evo 1. These are a fence-pounding, fence-building machine. 
purpose built. So we've got a lot of direction changes. You'll see right here as we go down the fence, I'm going to say there's five or six direction changes. Now, if we were using the wooden post, we'd have a whole lot of trouble right here because when we round a direction change on a wooden post, we're going to catch the knot on the fence and tear the knot off or tear the fence up. So they slide with ease. That's why we can do what we're doing here. We can pull up to a quarter mile, half mile, just depends on how many turns and how much wire you got. This is a one quarter mile roll. We'll be pulling two of those tomorrow. We're putting up yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood of five miles of fence on this farm. So what we're using today is a strain right uh, net board. It's a wedge style, but the wedges don't ever come in contact with the wire. You can see a pressed U shape in this end and then the, uh, the inverse of it on this side. And with the wedges uh, driven in there, you'll, you'll be able to see how, how uh, it sandwiches the wire and gets a really good hold. We just work our way from top to bottom, making sure that that's good and straight so that we don't end up with crooked line wires when it's over. The good thing about the strain right boards is that they uh, they last forever. Really hard to tear up. We have tried to break them and can't seem to get it done. So the way we're going to do this today is we're just going to run a heavy chain uh, hook on this end and a hook on that end and we'll run this back to the winch cable here to the Evo uh, and it'll, it'll tension it nice and even. It kind of self centers on that log chain. Uh, the other way to do it, if you don't have access to something big and powerful to pull this, uh, we use strain right boundary strainers. With a chain run to the post there, uh, obviously you'd have a chain at the top and a chain at the bottom. And you hook those dogs on the chain and it just walks right up. And the good thing about these is when you put just about all you can put on that, your wires at the proper tension. We've got a remote control winch on the Evo here. Uh, it's just a little key fob. It works from a few hundred feet away. Uh, and we're just gonna snug this up a little bit, make sure everything's looking all right. See how this chain comes around and self-centers itself. Uh, another good thing to do if you're stretching with a winch is a tie a sweatshirt or a spare tire or something around it in case you did break a cable. You might survive it. Well, that's the tip of the day, isn't it? Maybe surviving? Yeah, maybe surviving, <laughs> yeah. And we're going to go ahead and snug it on up a little bit. That is ridiculously cool, man. It's pretty cool. <laughs> right? It's really cool, man. I mean, he just barely moved it, and it's already... Yeah, that's the benefit of tornado really? high tensile fixed knot net wire, is that it, it just uh, immediately gets tight. It, it, it was... You didn't move it, but maybe... Four foot, maybe? Ah, uh, about a foot. Maybe a foot? Yeah, okay. started right here, so 18 inches. Whoa! Yeah, that's, that's quite impressive right there. And I can see, you could see it tighten up all the way down there around the corner as well. Look at that. So this run of wire is about 500 feet, and you can see all the direction changes out there. Got our help out here. His name's Bart. He's out there making sure all the corners are good to go. There's no brush or any weeds or anything. Good thing is we prepped the farm as best we possibly could so we could make this fence job as easy as possible. You guys might have heard me fussing a little bit in the past about my uh, excavator crew leaving a big mess for me. Uh, this is the reason why I'm irritated about that because this had to be straight, this had to be pretty, this had to be nice to make it easy to make our fence job less expensive. One critical mistake that a, that a lot of folks make when they're stretching woven wire is they, they put their uh, neck clamp on this side and traditionally with a wood post, they'll pull it tight and then they'll drive some staples in there, uh, what we call hard stapling. It's hard on the galvanized coating, it's hard on the wire, uh, and if you stretch it this tight, staples aren't going to hold it. So if you just move your, your stretcher bar back to the other side of the post, and again, if you don't have a winch, you're just going to pull to the post instead of pulling to the tractor or pulling with the skid steer or I've seen people park a park a side by side sideways and use a come along and obviously you can tell we'd drag a side by side off its wheels here. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> and if you're gonna if you're gonna put the time in to build it and spend the money, 
there's no point in uh, in doing a halfway job. You might as well just do it right. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Uh, we've we've cut these uh, vertical stays out, and basically it would be the other side of the knot. You snip just right in the middle. I'll show you more of that later. But then to, to slide this knot off, all you got to do is just twist that around, pinch it like that, and it loosens that up where they slide right off. So the next step, we're going to tie this off with what we call a high tensile termination knot. This is the hardest one to tie because we've got the strut in the way. Let me show you one more that's, that's easier to see without that strut in the way. You can tie these uh, right side up or upside down. I tie them upside down. So we come around the bottom. And we're going to go over and twist at the same time. Put a little bit of a kink in the wire there. Tuck that right through. So we've gone under, over, under, over. Just about like so. We're going to take one lazy loop. So it's going to be kind of a long wrap. And then there'll be two tight wraps. There's one, there's two. Put your crank handle in it there, snap it right off. The benefit of wringing the wire off instead of cutting it is that there's no sharp edge. If you cut that, it'll be an edge that would, that would cut a person or an animal. We're gonna go ahead and release this fence, is that right? That's right, we're gonna let the tension off the winch, put, okay. put the pressure on the on the strainer right. post. So what you guys need to see here is how much this post moves. If this was a wooden post brace, we'd be moving how far? Ah, uh, the Inch, ones that two, we three. sampled the other day was about four inches. Yep. So we pulled to the same tension with a wooden brace and the fence post moved about four inches. Check this out. Oh my. It didn't even hardly move. Proof's in the pudding right there, guys. This brace system really, really works. If you haven't seen the video on braces yet, check it out. We have a whole fence building series. Uh, there'll be a link scrolling across here so you can subscribe to that if you want to watch this whole fence building series. These guys are here actually teaching folks like me and like Pete. And we also have a couple volunteers over here. This is Plague of Badgers, if you ever see his comments on the channel. And his son. What's your son's name again? Chris. Chris. So, how about a woo? Woo! Woo! <laughs> there we go. So, guys, we're going to say bye for today's video, but look forward to many, many more coming out about this fence. We'll actually be building more. Be sure you check out GCI Turf Services channel. Awesome channel. Teach you how to grow a beautiful, beautiful lawn. Am I right? Yeah, we will. Good stuff. And he offers the products that help you to build the lawn. So, he built his YouTube channel around his landscaping business kind of on accident, right? Pretty much, about, yeah. About like me. I yeah. went out to sharpen the blades on my bush hog like, man, somebody want to know about this. Next thing you know, that's what we got. Yep. So, guys, thanks a lot for watching the channel today. Hopefully you enjoyed this and got to see a little bit of fun stuff. We'll catch you next time on the Stony Ridge. All, All right, right, Pete? Woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> He's got the woo down, man. Woo! It's a, it's a North Carolina thing. It's a Southern boy thing. Woo! It's a good time. <laughs> In the land of